Party people, how you feeling? Welcome to Drag Chat. He's a man. Yeah, she's a woman. He's gay. She's straight. He's a nightclub icon. You all salute her now. She served in the U.S. military for eight years. Sometimes we'll agree, and sometimes we won't. Yeah, what she said. Now, there are 75 queens in the first six seasons. I am not going to go through all 75 fucking queens. You can just forget that right now. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about the top three. We're going to talk about Miss Congeniality and any uh, standout moments or controversies throughout the seasons. <laughs> so let's get started. Well, first, uh, let's say hi to Rosemary. Hi, Rosemary. Hi, Z. You doing good, honey? Absolutely. <laughs> Good. Are you ready to do this, sweetheart? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Let's get to season one, shall we? <laughs> Rosemary, will you give us a rundown for season one, our top three, and Miss Congeniality? For season one of RuPaul's Drag Race, we had the winner being Bibi Sahara Benet, the second place being Nina Flowers, and the third place being uh, Rebecca Glasscock. The Miss Congeniality went to Nina Flowers. Well, I didn't agree with that. Okay, you didn't agree with that. What didn't you agree with? I felt that the first place should have been Nina Flowers. And the reason why I would have selected uh, Nina Flowers is because I thought she was the, the total package. She was beautiful, she was very entertaining, um, she was everything that I think a drag queen would need to be. I think the only thing that might have hindered Nina was her accent. I think if Absolute Vodka was just marketing um, in Puerto Rico or Latin America, she would have been hands down the, the person to select. But that not being the case, then I would think maybe that's what hindered her in getting into first place. Because for me, Bibi Sahara just, she just didn't cut it. I mean, she might be a very nice person, but she didn't strike me as the total package. You know, Rosemary, I kind of have to disagree with you about your theory about Nina Flowers and her accent hindering her. Um, I really think the reason that Bibi won this was because and no insult to Mother Rue, but, and I know that Rue has been a part of the club scene for many, many years. She was part of the club kid scene. Uh, she's been, well, I don't want to say she's been around, but <laughs> she's been around for a while. <laughs> but anyways, I think for that first season, because RuPaul didn't know where this was going to go and it was going to explode in the way that it did, I think Rue was looking for someone more in her aesthetic. I think Rue was looking for more someone of a female impersonator from top to bottom instead of someone that wanted to or someone that actually did jump out of that box who brought something completely new and completely different. I mean look at the whole cast for that season. That season was fantastic. You had just your beauty queens. You had those that stood out of the box. You had your um, astronomical performers. That Every single person on that season had a completely different style, a completely 
different personality, and a completely different way about going about their drag. So I don't think it was her accent that hindered her. I think it was that RuPaul was looking for someone more in, you know, like her, for better or worse lack of words there. Okay, so who would your top three have been? So my top three would have been Nina Flowers, Chanel, and Angina. Okay, so what about Miss Congeniality? Do you think the public got that one right? Um, my um, Miss Congeniality would have gone to Tammy Brown. I mean, how could you miss that? You know? But those are my picks uh, in terms of season one. Uh, pause. Rosemary, who is that peeking around the corner behind you? <laughs> okay, well, my three, my top three, really would have been Nina Flowers, Chanel, and Bibi. That would have been my top three. Miss Congeniality, you know, I didn't think about it, you know, when you said, until you said Tammy Brown, but. Tammy Brown, <laughs> really, <laughs> you know, it's really funny. A lot of people do not get her at all, and she is so sweet. She is crazy way out of the box, and I think that's why people don't get her is because she's too far out of their normal box. I love her to death. Now, there were a couple controversies in this season. One of them being Chanel, you know, how she basically disqualified herself. I agree with Chanel doing that, and I got to sit down and talk with Chanel about this. Here's a little clip of an interview that I had with her. We were on stage, we were during the Halloween kickoff in Chicago, and we sat down. This is basically 10 minutes after the show. We are both covered in sweat, our makeup is smeared, and Anyways, anyways, <laughs> here's what Chanel had to say about disqualifying herself and about her experience on RuPaul's Drag Race Season 1. I want to ask you something. I don't, don't want you to bullshit me, okay? okay? I know your experience with Ru and everybody was great, mm -hmm. you know, before, during, and since. Is there anything that you regretted or wished that didn't happen because of the whole experience? You know, I... Going on this show, I really never had any idea the popularity that the show was going to have. And I actually had never even heard of the Logo Network when I was booked on the show. Really? Yeah, I'd never even heard of it. Wow. Um, if I had known the success that the show was going to have, I probably would have brought some different things. Uh, there's a lot of things actually that I brought that I didn't even have the opportunity to wear, unfortunately, that I would have liked to have been able to have worn. Um, but I, I don't at all regret my decision to leave because I felt that I wasn't understood. And I think that looking back on it now, when I watch it, there's moments where I wish I had not have made that decision. But I also know that I stay true to myself. And I brought a package and I left with the same package. And I left being, basically being able to hold my head high and knowing that, that the experience was fun. But, um, you know, I, I think that it was just something that for all of us, it was so new. And they wanted to villainize someone on the show. And I think that there was moments where I was villainized, unfortunately. You were edited to me, though. Yeah, unfortunately. I, I know. Because I've gotten to know you a little bit over our past few meetings and past few weeks. Uh, I do not see the person that I saw on that show. Because on that show, they cut, they... They did. They, yeah, they yeah, did. Yeah, they did. Yeah. One of the other controversies, and this was because of the fans, was Jade. Jade being eliminated when she was. Um, I believe, and a lot of the fans believe, and I think if the producers in RuPaul go back and look at it, they would believe it too, that Jade should not have gone home against Rebecca Glasscock at that time. Um, RuPaul has even said in other seasons, drag is not a contact sport. And Rebecca was making a lot of contact with Jade. I mean, pulling on her wig and just manhandling her. I think Rebecca should have gone home. I don't think Rebecca should never, ever have made it to that top three at all. Do I think that Jade should have been in the top three? No, not at that time. And don't get me wrong. I love 
Jade to death. She's actually one of my dearest friends. But let me say this. At that time, no. At this time, yes. Because I have watched Jade grow and grow and grow. She is a force to be reckoned with these days. And if you ever get the chance to see her, go. <laughs> and if you're one of those queens that are performing with her, I'll tell you the same thing I tell all the other queens. You better fucking bring it because Jade leaves it all out on the stage. She will knock you out. <laughs>I think one of the standout moments for season one was when Angina came out to the world that she was HIV positive. So many people were moved by this. So many people were able to come out themselves because of this. It took a lot of courage and strength to do that on national TV and, and bless her. Just bless her. Bless her for having the strength to do that. The strength and the courage. Love you, Angina. Okay, Rosemary, let's move on to season two. Who do we got as our top three in Miss Congeniality? RuPaul's Drag Race, season two. Tyra Sanchez, Raven, and Jujubee, with Miss Congeniality going to Pandora Box. Okay, first question. Do you agree with that? And if you don't, why? I don't agree. <laughs> My number one would have been Raven. I mean, she was beautiful. What a beautiful face Raven has. And a, a really nice personality. I know that with the, the show, they edit certain things and they make people look certain ways that are not um, uh, very complimentary, but I thought she was absolutely beautiful. My second place would have been Morgan McMichaels for the same reason. Beautiful, beautiful face. And my third place would have been Shangri-La. Did you just say Shangri-La? <laughs> Girl, you've been partying, haven't you? Absolutely. Her name is Shangela. Can you remember that, dear? <laughs> Absolutely. Hallelujah. Loved her. Loved her, loved her, loved her. Loved her comedy, loved her personality, loved her outrageousness. Well, my dear, I kind of have to disagree with you on a couple points there. But first, let's start with Tyra. I think that Rue was still in this mindset that a drag queen has to be a female, beautiful impersonator. I mean, don't get me wrong, Tyra was beautiful. She really was. But drag has changed so much. And Raven just brought this out-of-the-box thing that Nina was bringing the year before. People were hungry. They were very upset. I, I actually, I'll say pissed that Nina didn't win the year before, and then Raven came along, and they thought, okay, Raven's going to win this, but she didn't. Um, I w believe that Raven should have won that. I truly believe that Raven should have been the winner of season two. Miss Congeniality is right. Pandora Box. Another one that should be on stage all the time, because she can command that stage. Miss Congeniality? Miss Pandora Box? <laughs> I love Pandora. <laughs> she deserved that one. And you were saying that she should be out on stage. Now. Pandora Box is now one of the most successful queens out there. She, like Jade from season one, has grown and grown. And she is one of the most popular queens out on the circuit. Love her to death. She deserves it because she's a great queen. Je retourne à la vie d'où je viens. Okay, Rosemary, who do we got for season three? Our top three were Raja, Manila Luzon, and Alexis Mateo with Miss Congeniality going to Yara, Yara Sofia. Okay, so what do you think of the top three? Don't agree with that one either. Woo, you don't agree with that one either. <laughs> All right, so tell me, who do you think should have been the top three? 
In my opinion, Man Manila Lusan should have won that one because, again, beautiful. Raja was okay. Manila, beautiful. That was what a woman should look like. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. So in my opinion, hands down, she should have gotten it. Mariah and Alexis Mateo would have been my second and third place pick. My uh, Miss Congeniality would have gone to Yara Sofia because again, she was cute, she had a great personality. Again, I'm going by what the show allows us to see. That's an interesting top three. I do have to agree with you on Manila Luzon. I think that she should have won that. I don't think that Raja should have won it. Um, there's a lot of controversy about Raja winning this. Controversies is and it's rumor, 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 allegedly, <laughs> that Raja won this because she was a friend of RuPaul for many years. That's one of the rumors. Don't know if it's true. We'll never know. But I don't think that she should have won. Um, as far as your other picks, Mariah. Mariah is absolutely beautiful. You are right about that. I agree with that. Now, Yara Sophia, I can see why she got Miss Congeniality on the show. I think it was due to the editing and all that because they made her seem like such a big, huge, bubbly, fun personality. <laughs> but let me tell you this. I've seen Yara Sophia perform, and <laughs> she was actually one of the most boring queens I've ever seen. Sorry. <laughs> All she did from the time she came out on that stage was walk to one side of the stage and go. And then she walked to the other side of the stage. And, went, and that was it. She just walked back and forth and just posed. And that was it. Nothing else. I do want to give credit to her for her wigs. She is a wig master. She's a wig artist. So I will give her those props. Another controversy that happened on that season was Mimi I'm First. Now, if you all remember, when Mimi had to lip sync for her life against India, she picked her up and threw her over her shoulder. Now let me say this. This is something that Mimi does in her shows. And the rumor is, allegedly, that the producers prodded her to pick up India and to do that routine with her during the lip sync for your life. Um, we all know who went home. <laughs> but um, I don't think that was really fair for people to give Mimi so much shit for doing that when it's something that's part of her regular show. I mean, I've seen her do it live. But to be allegedly rumored, prodded by the producers to do that, I don't think that was fair on her part. <laughs> now, who couldn't forget on that season that Miss Shangela be back in the box? <laughs> okay, Rosemary. Season four, who have we got for our top three, dear? The top three were Sharon Needles, Chad Michaels, and Fifi O'Hara, with the Miss Congeniality going to Latrice Royale. Okay, Rosemary, so what do you think about that? I agree with most of that. I, RuPaul was finally getting it, <laughs> in my opinion. Sharon Needles winning it, absolutely right. That... Her character had me so enthralled. I, I just loved watching the show while she was on it. She made it so watchable and so worthwhile to watch. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Chad Michaels, who can do share better than Chad Michaels? Uh, nobody. Hello. What a beautiful face Chad Michaels has. I loved it. Fifi O'Hara, on the other hand. Uh-oh. Here it comes. 
<laughs> the poor misunderstood Fifi O'Hara. Wasn't too crazy about Fifi O'Hara. And again, I don't know if it's because of the editing of what um, the producers or RuPaul allowed you to see, but she didn't come across as a very positive um, character. Okay, so who do you put there instead? My uh, third place would have gone had she had not gotten disqualified to William. Did you just say William? Absolutely. You do know her name was Willem, right? Absolutely. Are you sipping over there while we're doing this, dear? Absolutely. Okay, from now on, call her by her correct name, okay? Absolutely. It's Willem. It's Willem. Have you got it? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, really, talk about a Barbie doll. Beautiful. And the legs on, on that girl. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. So my top three would have gone to Sharon Needles, Chad Michaels, and of course, William. You just said William again. Did you just do that just to fuck with me? Absolutely. My uh, Miss Congeniality would have stayed with Latrice Royale because she deserved, she deserved that very much. Latrice was a beautiful person, and I'm quite sure that there wasn't any editing with regards to her personality. Beautiful soul. I loved her. Honey, they could have edited Latrice any way they wanted. Everybody loves Latrice, even to this day. She's still one of the most popular and most favored queens. And she's got that personality that's just genuine and honest. And I think that's why everybody loves her so much. Now, let's talk about some of these winners, first, second, controversies, and all that shit, shall we? When I first saw that Sharon Needles was cast on this show, I was like, yes, 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 yes. But I didn't think she had a shot in hell because of the mindset that I think that Rue was in. I don't think that Rue was ready to jump this far out of the box. When I saw the cast, I predicted that Chad Michaels would win this for a couple reasons. One, she's got the aesthetic that Rue, you know, herself has. Two, Chad's been in the business for 20 plus years. If anyone deserved it, it was Chad. <laughs> but... Rue heard the public, and she knew what the, the change was going on. The drag was really going out of the box, and she crowned Sharon. But I think she also knew, and the producers also knew, rumored allegedly that Chad got ripped off. She got robbed. So, allegedly rumored, <laughs> they created the All-Stars show which was filmed and aired within the same year. And Chad won it. I think it was predicted that Ch uh, Chad was going to win it. I think it was all created so that Chad could win this because they knew that Chad should have won that season, you know, but she didn't. So they created a whole new show so that Chad could win it and she could be the all-star because, let's face it, Chad is an all-star. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Have you noticed there hasn't been an all-star uh, season since then? Hmm. Coinky dink? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Willem. Can you say that with me, Rosemary? Willem. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's talk about Willem. Or shall we talk about the night where Willem... That was fabulous. <laughs> and the best part of it was, is the brain inside this bitch. She knew what night that was going to air. And she had her video for uh, Chow Down at Chick-fil-A all set up to debut that same night. And bam, she hit it out of the park. <laughs> the other thing about that was that she, I kept everybody guessing. The whole thing was going on. What did Willem do? What did Willem do? It was driving everybody nuts. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, she came up on the finale and she told what happened. <gasps> Shame on her. <laughs>
But that night, the best part of that night was when she told Fifi O'Hare, I will not apologize. And Ruth just spit her teeth out, screaming, consider that stolen. <laughs> I don't know about you, on, but I was on the floor just laughing my ass off. Um, I would have put Willem in that top three. I would have had Chad win, for sure. But my top three would have been, you know, Chad, Sharon, and um, Willem. That season, one of the lip syncs within that has been considered by the fans to be the fiercest lip sync of all time, and that was done by Dita Ritz. <laughs> Who just happens to be a friend of mine, and I happen to know she really is that fucking fierce on stage. <laughs> all right, Rosemary, let's move on to season five. RuPaul's Drag Race Season 5. Our top three were Jinx Monsoon, Alaska, and Roxy Andrews. Okay, do, do you agree with this top three? I don't agree with that. Okay, I agree with Jinx Monsoon winning, hands down. She was different, just, she was like Sharon Needles, and I love drag queens that are apart from that whole pageantry queen type of uh, drag queen. I liked I liked the Jinx Monsoon for that reason. But my second place would have gone to Coco Montres. What? <laughs> really? <laughs> Do explain, my dear. Because <laughs> there's a lot of people who are going to hear you say that and say exactly what I just said. What? <laughs> um, Coco Montres fought hard she listened to all the critiques that the judges gave her, down to the, the makeup, how to apply the makeup and such. So I think that she definitely should have gotten the second place. But my third place would have gone to Detox. I love Detox. I love the makeup. I love the way um, she applied it. Um, I, I love that she stayed true to her character, which a lot of, uh, of the other queens I saw kind of changed towards the end, but not Detox. She stayed true to who she was. Who is Miss Congeniality? Miss Congeniality went to Ivy Winters. Do you agree with that one? I agree with that. And uh, Ivy Winters, I would have given her the Miss Congeniality, which she was given that. So those are my top three. Um, Jinx Monsoon, Coco Montrese, and Detox. I love Detox, too. Yeah, I would have put her in the top three. Um, Coco, mm, not so sure about that. And she was one of the biggest uh, controversies of that whole thing. Well, not controversies, but one of the standout moments was her battle with Alyssa Edwards. Monsoon, I am glad that she won. I think she deserved that. Ivy Winters, I would have put up farther in the competition that she was. I really believe that she deserved to be up there farther. Alaska, I loved her up in there. A lot of people think that Alaska just got it because she was Sharon Needles' um, partner. In case a lot of you don't know out there, Sharon Needles and Alaska Thunderfuck were partners. Sharon was on one year and Alaska was on the next year. And a lot of people think that Alaska got that far because she was the winners of the previous year's boyfriend. I don't think so. Especially if you've seen Alaska grow since then. She has become one of the most predominant queens out in the community. I mean, surpassing Jinx. Um, even surpassing Sharon. <laughs> Alaska is... She's great. She's great. Check her out. Uh, the third place, which are Roxy Andrews. I don't agree with that. I mean, Roxy is a pageant queen. She is extremely respected in the pageantry system. So, but I don't think that she should have top, gone in that top three. I just don't. That's my opinion, bitches. If you don't like it, oh, well, you don't have to watch the show. <laughs> Okay.
Okay, Rosemary, season six, what do we got for our top three? Our top three were Bianca Del Rio, Ador Delano, Courtney Act, and our Miss Congeniality went to Ben De La Creme. You have disagreed with season one through five so far. What do you think about season six's top three? I agree with all of that. Wow, she agreed with all of that. <laughs> Why? I loved, loved, loved the last season. If they finally got it right, they figured out what is it that people want to see. Bianca Del Rio stole the show from day one. From day one, she had you like wrapped up into you know her world. And Ador Delano, I mean, what a beautiful voice. I listen to all of her music on YouTube or any, anything new that comes up. I'm always searching for her on YouTube. Um, Courtney Act, beautiful, another Barbie doll. Her, her and William. Okay, you just said William again. You're doing this just to fuck with me, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I thought. We should get together and do something because they are so beautiful, the two of them together. Actually, they have done something together, dear. As a matter of fact, they're doing things with Alaska Thunderfuck. So I think RuPaul, it took six years, but they finally got it right. Okay, here we go. Season six. Let me say this straight out. The moment that Bianca Del Rio was announced as a cast member, <laughs> we all knew she was going to win this. There was nobody to take it from her. She would have had to fuck up every single thing to lose this because we knew she was going to take it from the moment she was announced. And she deserved it. She really did. Uh, and she's representing. I mean, she is really representing. Um, Adore Delano. I was a fan of Adores from when she was on American Idol, Danny Noriega. Loved him on that. I thought he was sassy and spunky and had a great voice. And when I heard that he was going to be on this show as Adore, I was like, yeah, this is going to be fun to watch him. <laughs> as far as Courtney Act goes, psh, I don't think she belonged in the top three at all. Really, really don't. Um, I'm not a fan of the type of drag. I don't even want to say that she was doing drag. To me, she was more of a transvestite. She was a boy who threw on a wig and some makeup and girl clothes. She wasn't really, I, I don't, she, she walked around in these bikinis and with her ass hanging out, same as Jocelyn Fox did. And you know what? You got some really great asses, but they're boy asses. I want to see a drag queen. You know, I want to see some illusion. There was no illusion there. Yes, Courtney Act is very pretty, but boy, when she would wear these costumes, it was a boy's body and a boy's ass, and that was it. Mm. Kind of just, just not my cup of tea in the world of drag. Just not my cup of tea. Um, it was also great that Bianca won because finally a comedy queen was going to take it, and if there was going to be a comedy queen to take this, it was going to be Bianca Del Rio, and she did it. I would have put Benda La Creme up in that top three. I'm glad that she won Miss Congeniality, but I love Dela's, uh, I love her character. I love her personality. I, mean, I, I just think she's a fabulous, fabulous queen. I really do. I love it. Now, the special standout moments on that one <laughs> happens to go to Milk. <laughs> The first queen to ever walk the runway dressed as RuPaul as a man. <laughs> and the first queen to ever walk the runway pregnant. <laughs> I died laughing. I thought it was so funny and so far out there. I loved it, loved it, loved it. Now, there was one other queen on that season who happened to take the fan vote and everybody else's vote for the most fucking annoying queen ever. And RuPaul Herstory. <laughs> Y'all know who I'm talking about, don't you? Okay! <laughs> Laganja Estranja. <sighs> That's all I'm going to say about her. <laughs> well, now that we've been through all of seasons one through six, are you looking forward to uh, season seven, my dear? 
I am so looking forward to season seven to see what other characters are going to come into my world. But until then, enjoy. Rosemary, dear, thank you for coming on and talking about all of this. It was really good to have your opinion, you know, being on your side of the coin there. I love it. I will see you soon, okay? Absolutely. Now, I want to ask you out there, what did you think of all these from season one through season six? Who would your top three have been? Who would your miscongeniality have been? What were some of the standout moments for you? What did you think about some of the standout moments that we talked about? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Here's a question that I want to ask you also. Do you think that someone that has never been in the bottom two should have won? <laughs> what do you think? So let us know what you think about, you know, each season, standouts, your top threes, your miscongenialities. You know, let us know. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, everybody, you do me a favor. And if you know me, you know what it is. You have fun and you get home safe. I'll see you soon, okay? Good night. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Drag Chat. Follow us on Facebook. Please subscribe by clicking on the link below.